What's up guys, in this video we are going over how to make a basic still life using Blender 2.9. Just two months shy of two years of my last Blender tutorial, this is actually very inspired by Ducky 3D's tutorial from just a year ago of how to create a trendy abstract design in Blender. In the video he looks at some artists like Peter Tarka and Sadat Jakar who make these really cool abstract looking still life scenes in Blender. And I love Ducky's tutorial, but working with my Digital Media 1 studio for my high school students, I felt like his tutorial moved a little fast and I wanted to kind of simplify it down and, and just show the bare basics. So I've learned most of what I know in Blender from Ducky. If you are someone who is above the beginner level, I strongly recommend taking a look at his videos and his channel. This is just gonna be a simpler version of this exact tutorial. So I'll link it or put the card here, how um, that actually works. So in his video, he actually looks at the work of Peter, Tar Peter Tarka a lot and I love a lot of his still lives and I show them with my students for sure. But I wanted to highlight two different VFX studios in Chicago that actually do work that uses the same ideas, the same basic skills that we're doing here. The first one here is Carbon, their VFX house in Chicago. And uh, I mean like, just for example, this quick Verizon ad that they made where they're doing a marketing ad for Verizon where Verizon says that it's a good network for mobile gaming. So the 3D VFX artist basically created this homage to gaming, creating these 3D models of different video game-like pieces and then just threw Verizon's logo on it and you got an advertisement. Another one of my favorite VFX studios in Chicago is The Mill. Recent products of theirs all do tons of awesome 3D, such as the Sony pinball ad, which is basically one big still life with lots of complicated textures that virtual cameras pan over. Obviously we're not getting this complicated, but we're doing the basics of it here. So let's dive in. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save this with a command S, command N to create a new file. And here we go. The basics of Blender, right? I've got here my default cube. Blender comes in with my camera, my cube, my light. If I press G on my keyboard, I can grab it around. X, Y, or Z after that lets me move it on the X, Y, and Z axis. So I'll go ahead and bring it up on the Z a little bit. S is for scale, right? And I can press X, Y, or Z again to scale it up. And then R is rotation, same hotkeys there. To get into the more nuance of modeling, we're going to go to edit mode. Up here in the top left, I click on object mode and I can go to edit mode. The hotkey to switch between these two is tab, the tab key on the keyboard. But when I'm in edit mode, I can see the vertices and the edges and I can even up here grab edge, select or face select mode. If I'm in face select mode and zoom in a little bit, I can then use the S to scale the face. I can G to grab the face or R to rotate that face. And just that face, we can do the same thing with edges and vertices. Over here on the left side, we've got a few really cool modeling tools. I'm only gonna show two, maybe three today. First one, one of the most basic ones is extrude, hotkey E on the keyboard. You click on extrude, you can then extrude different faces or edges there. Once you have extruded an edge, you can then scale that down and we're already getting new and different shapes, right? If I, in face mode, click A, it selects all of my faces on the object. The next tool that I wanna show is bevel. Hotkey on a Mac, Command B, Control B on a PC. I click bevel here, I can then click and drag and it bevels the edges, which is kind of that like miter cut, right? You can then open up the options. As soon as you do it, you only get this option menu uh, once. If you click on something else, it goes away. But this option menu down here in the bottom left, if you increase the segments on it, it creates your nice rounded, softer shapes. And look, we got our first shape. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna set up this virtual scene, right? If we're creating a still life, then we need to think of this as like a virtual photo shoot. So let's create a cool little backdrop real quick. Ducky 3D shows how to do this just by going to Shift A and making a plane. Plane is just a flat 2D surface, but if I scale it up, if I press S, I can type in any number and scale it by that amount. So I'll press S10, boom. Zoom out a little bit so I can see it. Back in edit mode, I will go to edge select. Just click on one of my back edges and then press E to extrude. And I'll actually press Z then and extrude it on the Z axis. So I got that. The next step really easily, if you click on the little corner edge now and bevel that, right? Grab your bevel tool or command B, drag that out a little bit. And then once again, give that some segments. Switching back to object mode, we now have a nice little backdrop. Let's set up a camera. You can zero out this camera, reorient this camera. I'm just gonna press X to delete it. Shift A, make a new camera. If I bring that up on the Z axis, pull it back on the X axis, and then I will go ahead and zero out the rotation here real quick. Zero, zero, zero on the rotation and object properties. And then I can go ahead and scale that up to, uh, or rotate that up to point at my scene. 
so quickly right here for me, that was like 90 degrees on the uh, X and Z axis, and then just zero degrees on the Y axis, or you'll need to take a look at your own scene and set that up. Once you're there, you can click on your camera and take a look at what it looks like through camera mode. With my camera still selected, I'll move it down on the Z axis a little bit, so G and then Z, just to see the bottom here. And then now we're in camera mode, we can just click on any of our objects and move them around in our scene. Rotate this in the Z axis and just really get a good look as to how it's gonna look like when I am uh, looking at it through my camera. So that looks good. So using those basic tools, we can create a number of other cool objects. So I shift A and then make like a cylinder. I'll bring my cylinder up on the Z axis. Again, G, Z to do that. I'll scale it down on the Z axis. S, Z, there it is. I'll press tab to go to object mode. Select this top face maybe, extrude it, scale it, grab it down on the Z-axis. I press the tilt of the squiggly key, and then three, which is view selected, to zoom in or center my camera on one object. Tilde, three, there we go. And then I can select this other face and extrude it down, scale it down, extrude another one, scale it even further, and I'm just creating that top that I had in my example. I finished the top off with just a cone and an icosphere on the top of it. So I'll make a cone there, bring it up top, scale it down, and then probably stretch it out on the Z axis a little bit too. So S, Z. Let's intersect those. Shift A, let's make another icosphere. This one I'll just actually drop my subdivisions down to one. So it's a 20 sided polyhedron. Shout out to my Dungeons and Dragons players. Bring that down. And if I click one, hold shift, select the other objects, I can then command J, control J on a PC, and I join those together to make one object. Let's go ahead and uh, look at our camera view again and place that somewhere in our scene. I'll go ahead and rotate it a little bit because it is the top. But now we're getting some just basic, simple shapes. I tell my students to create a variety of scale, right? You wanna think about like uh, having some big objects, some medium objects, and some small objects. So I'll go ahead and do the time-lapse thing, create some really quick small objects. And then maybe also think about how to stack objects or how to play with more like physics, make things look like they're leaning up against each other. To make that like stick shape, all it really is is a scaled down cylinder and then scaled up on the Z axis. So that's uh, you know S to scale and then S Z to stretch up on the Z axis. Play with ways to have the shapes interact with each other. So I showed my students one more uh, basic tool in edit mode, one more basic modeling tool. I'll go ahead and start with another uh, cylinder here, bring it up, scale it up on the Z axis. Press the squiggly key in three to squiggly key in three to center my camera on it. Let's just uh, bring it up a little bit more so it's on its own. And that is, if I go back to edit mode, press tab on keyboard, that is the loop cut tool. The loop cut tool is right beneath the bevel tool, hot key command R on a Mac, control R on a PC, I'm pretty sure. If you click on the loop cut tool and then hover on an object, you get this cool yellow line around it. If you click and drag that yellow line, what you're doing is you're gonna create new edges and new vertices to play with. So if I click on that, and then immediately press S when those are selected, I can scale down and basically create new shapes. And that's kind of how I made the vase in uh, my example. Bring this down, scale that one out, maybe create one more. Again, I just click and drag that yellow line, scale that one in and go back to edit mode, or I'm sorry, go back to object mode. I've got this cool looking face. I'll go ahead and slap that back down on the G axis, or on the Z axis, and maybe put it in the back. I tell my students, you wanna think about depth. You wanna think about foreground, midground, background when you're making these. You wanna think about having objects that are in the front, in the middle, and in the back. Boom. I'll time lapse this out, but something else that I was showing my students is if you look up an image, so I had like an image of the Sears Tower from here in Chicago. I'll go ahead and put that uh, somewhere on my screen where I can see it. You're able to bring it in a blender too, but I'll just uh, move my screen to the side for now. I can really just grab like a, a simple cube through the technique of loop cutting. I can loop cut my way to create whole new buildings, right? So I'll go ahead and potentially start by scaling that one up on the Z axis. Maybe then extruding this a little bit with on the top face. E to extrude. 
And I'm just gonna be looking at my reference right here and seeing like where I see different loop cuts. For starters on the Sears Tower, it looks like if I just grab a loop cut here and then I grab a loop cut here, I can then just pull this individual face up E to extrude, and I'm gonna slowly build out the Sears tower. Let's time lapse this. And there it is. There's plenty of other ways to model real world objects, bringing in photos using references, but for my intents and purposes, that is just fine. The last thing I wanna show is before this tutorial gets too long, there's going to be some basic materials, right? So in Blender, we've been working in, in our shaded view the entire time up here in the top, right? If I switch back or if I switch over to my uh, uh, rendered mode, currently I'm rendering an Eevee. There we see that I've got basic light in my scene and just the flat material color. First things first, I'll go ahead and click on the light. Blender comes in that default point light. I press X and delete that. I would love to set up my own lights. Ducky in his tutorial shows how to set up basic three area light system and I'll basically just imitate that. Just grab an area light, press G, bring it up on the Z axis, press S to scale it up pretty big. And then in my light properties down here, let's go ahead and give it like an lot of wattage for its power. I'll put it at like 350 for now. Basically, the more the more you scale your light up, the more power you're gonna need because 300 watts like at this size is a really bright, but 300 watts at this size is, is less powerful. You can shift D to duplicate your lights, press R twice to repoint them. I'll move my camera so I can actually like get a good shot at that. So what I've got right now is I've got a top light, I've got a front light, and then Let's go ahead and create a cool little effect light from the side. Shift E to move that. R and let's rotate that on the X axis. G and Z to move that down. Check out my camera view. And I do like that cool three light system. As far as materials go, let's go ahead and click on any one of our objects. I'll start with my Sears Tower over here. In our materials menu, I've shown this in other tutorials, you can just create a new material right here. The principal BSDF on the surface right here, that's our basic flat color. That one's as simple as it gets. We can change the base color right here. I can bring down the brightness or darkness to make it actually like full shaded or like the dark of a Sears Tower, but I can also give it some other colorings. In my class, we'll talk about uh, how to pick color schemes and uh, why certain colors work better with each other than other colors. I'll go ahead and give my background a pretty dark color if my objects are going to be on the lighter side. To finish off this tutorial, uh, if we're just doing it still see nothing's moving, one of the Blender render engines that works the best for just still scenes, if you go to your render properties here, is switching your render engine from EV to Cycles. It takes a little bit longer to load and get rid of this noise, but it looks so much better with all the reflections from the lights in the scene. From there, I can keep playing, adding materials, changing the colors. Instead of adding a new material, if you want to give us the same color as another material already in the scene, we can click this down arrow right here and then pick one of our pre-existing materials. Boom. So again, very large shout out to Ducky3D for making his original trendy abstract design tutorial. I wanted to simplify it a little bit for my Digital Media Arts 1 students, but hey, hopefully this helps you acclimate and kind of get a feel for working in Blender 2.9. Thanks for watching.